Prime Minister of uh, Minister of China. And, and they have, uh, oh, actually, uh, our staff mm -hmm. are uh, trying to reach uh, uh, Mr. Ma, Jack yeah. Ma as well, because obviously. Hi, this is Justine, your host for Culture Fusion today. For this episode, we have Teresa Wa, the MLA of Enrichment Center and BC Minister of International Trade and Minister responsible for Asia-Pacific strategy and multiculturalism to discuss the expansion of trade network in China. So it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, so let's talk about Hopper's trip to China and how it influenced the relationship of Canada with China in various aspects. The meeting of Hopper's trip to China had reached good results with the two countries having had discussion on a wide range of topics including economic, social and energy of resources as well as envir environmental protections. So what's your outlook for Canada and China's outlook in trade and economic exchanges? Actually, we are really pleased that uh, Prime Minister Harper uh, visited China and, and, they ha and he also has reached uh, so many agreements mm -hmm. with uh, China. So we are very hopeful that this will set a very good trend for better, closer trading relationship with China. But I'm the Minister of International Trade mm -hmm. for British Columbia, mm -hmm. so uh, I can talk about British Columbia actually. Um, we are the province with the most diversified trading exports among all the provinces mm -hmm. in Canada. Because overall, uh, I would say that more than 70% of Canadian exports are to the United States, 30% mm -hmm. to the rest of the world, of, co of course, including Asia Pacific and China as well. But for our province, uh, we have about 50% uh, of our trade, export trade are uh, to the United States and over 40% are to Asia Pacific and a fair majority are to China. Mm -hmm. And our government really sees the value of Asia Pacific region, in particular China, to the growth of our economy. So we have been um, setting up uh, our trade and investment offices mm -hmm. in China. We have four offices there in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou and Hong Kong. The idea of setting up offices in uh, mm -hmm. China is to try to uh, promote our BC products to China okay. and also try to attract more investment into British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And last year, our total export to China is $6.8 billion. Oh, wow. So this is a huge increase compared mm -hmm. to 10 years ago. So, and we are still working hard on trying to promote mm -hmm. more export to China and to attract more investment coming over. That's why our Premier has visited China several times. Mm -hmm. And for me, since I was appointed as the Minister of International Trade mm -hmm. in May last year, uh, I just uh, took another trade mm -hmm. mission to China in November. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what are your thoughts on like China being Canada's second largest trading partner and is ind indirectly responsible for half a million Canadian jobs? Oh, actually, uh, job creation is mm -hmm. very important, especially British Columbia. Yeah, our government is concerned. We want to create mm -hmm. more high-paying jobs mm -hmm. for British Columbia. And that's why, as I said earlier, we mm -hmm. focus on exporting our goods and products as well as our services mm -hmm. to Asia Pacific because Asia Pacific, uh, including China as well, is the fastest growing economy mm -hmm. in the world. And we are only a small market. Mm -hmm. uh, even Canada is a small market because we don't have a big population, even though we are blessed with a lot of natural mm -hmm. resources. Yes. So without um, you know, uh, developing our natural resources, how can we provide jobs for mm -hmm. British Columbia, for Canadians? And that's why our government also focus on the development of LNG industry. LNG stands mm -hmm. for liquefied natural gas mm -hmm, because yes. uh, we have a safe record of um, ex uh, blowing uh, natural gas mm -hmm. in the past 50 years. But all this year, we have been exporting th that to the United States. And mm -hmm. right now, because the natural gas prices in US yes. is really low mm -hmm. and compared with Asia Pacific, is only one fifth of what they ask for. Mm -hmm. That's why we are thinking about a new way of exporting our natural gas to Asia Pacific and to China. Mm -hmm. That's why we liquefy it and then okay. export over there. And that will also create many high paying jobs. We expect mm -hmm. at least 100,000 high paying jobs in British Columbia. Oh wow, mm -hmm. that's really nice. We're gonna have more high paying job in BC. <laughs> oh actually, uh, our staff mm -hmm. uh, are trying to reach uh, uh, Mr. Ma Yun, yeah. Jack Ma as well. So um, we have another question. So like on Harper's first day of his China trip, he met with Jack Ma, mm -hmm. discussing about how Alibaba can help small and medium sized business to create more Canadian jobs by selling high quality agriculture and seafood products mm -hmm. in China. So how do you see this new cooperation? 
Oh, actually, uh, our staff mm -hmm. uh, are trying to reach uh, uh, Mr. Ma Yun, yeah. Jack Ma as mm -hmm. well, because obviously our government is trying to attract more uh, major mm -hmm. Asian corporation yes. to set up their head office in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. What I mean by head office is their head office in America, yes. because we see Vancouver as the gateway mm -hmm. of America to Asia Pacific. Uh, it, this is purely because of the huge number of Asian immigrants in British yes. Columbia. Mm -hmm. Plus, we are fortunate enough to be geographically located on the Pacific Rim. Mm -hmm. So we see British Columbia yeah. as part of Asia Pacific region. Yes. We don't see as <laughs> part of. Well, of course, we are also part of mm -hmm. America, but at the same time, we are also part of Asia Pacific region. Mm -hmm. So, to if we can attract. Uh, Mr. Jack Ma mm -hmm. to set up an office in uh, BC in Vancouver. That will mean a lot for us. Yes, yeah. it is definitely. So, um, what other Canadian industry do you see will be a good future addition to the trades between the two countries? Actually, right now we have been exporting a lot mm -hmm. of lumber, uh, yes. lumber mm -hmm. industry to China. Uh, Ten years ago, hardly any lumber w was exported to China, mm -hmm. but our government, the Liberal government, we really seize the opportunity in China and that's why we started penetrating to the China market mm -hmm. and I just give you a, a simple uh, uh, percentage. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, 80% of our lumber mm -hmm. were all exported to the United States. Yes, yes, After yes. we have done that for the last 10 years, now only 40% Okay. are exported to the United States mm -hmm. and close to 40% of our lumber industry of our lumber product are exported mm -hmm. to China. There are many wood frame houses in China okay. because wood frame houses are good for human mm -hmm. living because uh, uh, you, you feel even warmer in winter time and you feel colder, I mean more cool in the mm -hmm. summer time. So this is another area that we focus on. Okay. Liquefied natural gas, I told you yeah, already, to and also earlier. mining, mm -hmm. right? We, we, yes, we mining. are very blessed with uh, copper, mm -hmm. uh, nickel, and also gold and, and all the others, uh, mine, silver as well. Okay. So another one is seafood. Uh, yes. Because I just mm -hmm. came back from Qingdao uh, a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Qingdao has the largest seafood uh, expo uh, okay. uh, held uh, there. Mm -hmm. And I led um, 18 seafood companies, there were 50 delegates, oh. to showcase our seafood to the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, buyers and distributors. And every time Chinese heard about uh, seafood made in Canada or mm -hmm. made in British Columbia, they really feel that the seafood is of the best quality and it's very safe for co consumption. Yes. So mm -hmm. I see a lot of opportunity for us to export our seafood to China as well. Yes, we have fresh salmon here. Yeah, <laughs> we all love, I love seafood. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when um, PM Harper and she met, they also announced that the year 2015 and 2016 are designated as the China-Canada Culture Exchange Year. Mm -hmm. So how can China and Canada better improve its people-to-people -people exchange through educational and cultural co collaboration? Actually, right now, I think China is our number one uh, in terms of international education mm -hmm. students yes. because you always feel that in order to promote any kind of relationship between two countries, education mm -hmm. is the best yeah. because mm -hmm. with students coming from China to study here, whether they study for half a year, one year, mm -hmm. two year, three year, four years, they, they are fully immersed into our culture. Yeah. When they go back home, they mm -hmm. will be our ambassador. So mm -hmm. I see international education as a very good avenue for mm -hmm. us to promote cultural exchange. And also in British Columbia, we are quite fortunate because mm -hmm. there's a lot of cultural show coming yes. here. And particularly every week, you mm -hmm. can see a cultural show happening uh, in, yeah. in, in BC. And I think we are the most multicultural uh, province in the whole of Canada. Yes. And I think every day, uh, you ask every uh, British Columbian, they know different kind of culture. Mm -hmm. And especially the Chinese culture with a huge population, we have mm -hmm. uh, close to 500,000 Chinese Canadian in British Columbia. And wow. this Chinese Canadian, they keep in touch with their, their mm -hmm. fellow uh, um, uh, citizen, mm -hmm. and they themselves can be ambassador to talk about mm -hmm. our culture, our food culture, yes. our, mm -hmm. our, our other kind of entertainment culture, all kinds of culture. Mm -hmm. So I see this as uh, ha actually happening already. Wow, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, in your past trip to China, including a recent one, mm -hmm. what is China that impressed you most that you think can help strengthen Ch Canada and China relationship? Actually, I think um, Canada and China mm -hmm. has a long-standing history, mm -hmm. dating back from the time, time of Dr. Bethune. Mm -hmm. I do understand that in China, in your elementary school textbook, yes. you do talk, mm -hmm. talk about Dr. Bethune. Uh, that's why I think many Chinese have a very good impression of mm -hmm. Canadian. I think the one good thing about being Canadian that we don't have to promote us to Chinese mm -hmm. because uh, 
Canadians uh, in the world, uh, we have established a good reputation as a friendly, compassionate, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people. So I think we can take advantage of that kind of good impression of Canadian mm -hmm. to further strengthen our relationship. And that's why it's mm -hmm. important for our government uh, uh, minister to visit China because uh, so many countries all over the world are trying to promote their trading relationship with yeah. China. I think we have to be in their face all the time. That's why, as I told you earlier, our premier uh, will try to visit China at least yeah. once every two years and I will make it a point to visit mm -hmm. China once a year so that I can go and talk to the government, government to government relationship mm -hmm. is important for any kind of trading relationship. Yes. I can open up the doors for all the business people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I took in 50 delegates in my last mission oh, to wow. China, Japan, and South Korea. Uh, in Qingdao, actually, um, I, I have the uh, honor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us some more about that trip? That uh, you, you uh, yeah. In Qingdao, actually, mm -hmm. um, I, I have uh, the honor of meeting yes. with Qingdao mm -hmm. Mayor, Mayor okay. Zhang. And uh, I managed to uh, arrive at the MOU uh, with uh, Qingdao. Mm -hmm. And actually, we are the first Canadian jurisdiction to arrive at a MOU on economic partnership. Oh. So Qingdao has economic partnership mm -hmm. with many countries all over the world, including Australia, uh, Europe, and mm -hmm. United States. But they never have any economic partnership with Canada. Oh, and wow. I felt mm -hmm. so honored to be able to open up that relationship because as you know, you come from China, right? Mm -hmm. You know that Qingdao is a very well developed, even though it's supposed to be a second tier city, yes. but mm -hmm. it's still a very developed coastal city, mm -hmm. especially with the last Olympic being held there. Yes. And mm -hmm. then I, I was in Qingdao 10 years ago. Oh. And this time I, ca I went to Qingdao, I find there's so much development there. Yeah. And one good thing about Qingdao is the central government mm -hmm. in the latest five year plan, mm -hmm. they uh, are designating the whole of Shandong province as the blue mm -hmm. economy. Okay. So they are going to promote mm -hmm. ocean technology over mm -hmm. there. And for us, uh, British Columbia is leading in ocean technology. Yes, we have yeah. an Ocean yeah. Network Canada mm -hmm. located at the University of Victoria. Okay. So we are helping, working with the Shandong Fishery and Ocean Department as well as Ocean University, mm -hmm. trying to uh, uh, work on the ocean technology and I was I learned that China is planning to build a tunnel between Thailand and Yantai yes, I heard that. yeah <laughs> and that will be one of the longest uh, tunnel in the yes. world mm -hmm. and before they are going to go on that project they have to study the undersea mm -hmm. bed to see whether the, that is suitable for building the tunnel mm -hmm. and what I understand is Ocean Network Canada mm -hmm. is now working with Ocean uh, University as well as the Shandong government on okay. monitoring the seabed situation and we are mm -hmm. taking a pilot study and to to try to find enough data so that they can build the tunnel so oh. there's a lot of uh, cooperation between uh, bc and china yeah yeah mm -hmm. thank you for like doing all this for yeah. bc mm -hmm. and um one last question mm -hmm. if there are any challenges in this um bilateral relations mm -hmm. what are they and what what would you suggest for the two sides to handle this difference to promote a win-win relationship mm -hmm. I think uh, right now, actually, uh, mm. um, not only British Columbia, I think Canada yes. really mm -hmm. understand the need to really have a closer mm -hmm. trading relationship with China because yes. of the huge market there. Mm -hmm. And we have so much uh, uh, rich natural resources mm -hmm. and we are good at high technology mm -hmm. and at life science, clean mm -hmm. technology. So how to go about doing it? I think we are doing a good job, mm -hmm. but I think um, uh, because of uh, there are still some tariff barriers there mm -hmm. uh, that will make us not competitive compared with countries like Australia, New Zealand okay. and Korea mm -hmm. who already have a free trade agreement with China. Uh -huh, yeah. So we we just arrived at a free trade agreement with South Korea. Okay. South Korea is the first Asian country that mm -hmm. Canada has uh, negotiated for a free trade agreement. It will come mm -hmm. into effect on January the 1st. Okay. But with China, mm -hmm. we don't have a free trade agreement. So mm -hmm. that means when our products export to China, okay. there will be duties imposed on our product. So when okay. you have duty imposed on it, that means we are not competitive with mm -hmm. product coming from Australia. So I'm hoping that our government, because in terms of free trade agreement negotiation, okay. it's not mm -hmm. our jurisdiction, it's the mm -hmm. federal government's uh, responsibility. So hopefully, we, the federal government can, you know, uh, mm -hmm. consider, you know, uh, opening up a free trade agreement with China that yeah. will eliminate all the mm -hmm. tariff and non-tariff barriers. Okay. Then we can have a more uh, better competition yeah, with the yeah. other countries in the world. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, we want to thank you again for coming mm -hmm. to our show today. Mm -hmm. This is Justine, your host for Culture Fusion.